place I trust Oh, where can I hide from your presence, O oh Lord? Where can I hide from your justice and love? Oh, where can I hide from your spirit, O oh God? Search me and know my heart, O oh Lord. Search me and know my heart. And I will abide in the light of your shadow. My God, my refuge, my fortress, I trust. Justice and love, oh, where can I hide from your spirit, oh God? Search me and know my heart, oh Lord. Search me and know my heart. Search me and know my heart. You may have not heard that song before because it was written by somebody that my family and I know personally. And, uh, oh, I've talked about him before. An old worship leader at our church. Him and my dad are more friends than, you know. Anyway, uh, that's a good song. Of course, it's uh, based in Psalms uh, 139, which we've, we've talked about that chapter before talked about it was a while ago how david goes through all of these these uh facets of life about um god's omnipresence basically and his omniscience and omnipotence and that he you know recognizing his his sovereignty over things and even over our our own sin and then he talks about how he has this righteous uh, anger against those who are against God. And then he finishes the whole thing off with saying that line, search me and know my heart, try me and know all my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I had mentioned how that's cool to me. Acknowledging who God is and then declaring our allegiance to him and how we hate sin and then we go but wait a minute please make sure that i am you know that this is genuine what i'm saying and that there's actually no sin in me that i'm not being a hypocrite 
and that it's good to to remember that lest we become boastful in our humility or proud of our righteousness you know beware when a man think he stand lest he fall pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall and anyway so it's just a it's a good reminder and that's we haven't done the song before so i figured it'd work and it, it, interestingly it, with that whole idea of sin and yet god working through us and then turning our sin around i i've recently i've been listening to jay vernon mcgee passed away a while ago but his radio station is still um going praise the lord southern guy he, if you heard his voice you couldn't miss him he's been going through esther in the the series that they've been um casting and he was talking about how in esther there's there were a lot of things that were going on that really shouldn't have happened um amongst the jewish characters um, the jewish people in in the story esther and mordecai as he calls him and even specifically like the whole beauty contest thing and entering esther or hadassah into the contest because the the hope and what you know came to be of course is that she came to queenship and god used it to save the jewish people from eradication <laughs> but if she lost then she would have been subject to being a part of the harem to being one of the king's many concubines just another object in the royal palace which is not so cool when you think about mordecai of uh, putting her in that position although she was willing uh, but it's still like there are a bunch of aspects to it and about the the contest itself and the vanity of it and everything that like there was a lot of things that should not have been happening and yet god blessed them and used them in it so does that make everything okay no does that mean that we we have a past for sinning as long as we have a good motive in doing it no all it was demonstrating is that god has providence over everything and it shows his grace in that he uses our sin he doesn't just throw us out and you know okay you want to do this well you're receiving your just consequent you know there is a balance between the free will of man and the sovereignty of god as much as it, it is in salvation it is in our personal relationship with him hence the song we we don't ever want to just sacrifice as we've talked about before what would be the best option what would be the thing that god is actually leading us to do just because we think this can work out and one of the things that he had mentioned in there is when she was talking about going to the king and asking uh and with the understanding that if he you know her going into the the king's court his throne room without being called she could die and so she called for the people to fast but there was no mention of praying it wasn't fasting and praying it was just fasting maybe they did pray but it was it's interesting that it's not mentioned so it's like the seeking god in things wasn't verbalized it was just fasting so that god would give us favor sort of as opposed to seeking what god's will would be and there's so many different things that you could get into about all of these different dynamics but the point is what are we really really doing in life are we asking god to search our hearts and asking god to give us guidance and it is appropriate for me as of recent and of course every day we should be praying that we would not be cowardly in the face of of such a such a dark and spiritually heavy world and influences and everything uh but that you know we would let our light so shine and then in the same sense that we would not let our indignation toward <laughs> toward this world and and seeking for the truth to make us big headed and whatever and then also that we wouldn't be uh complacent in either either side 
our, our own output, but then also our personal life. And so it's just kind of, yeah, it's just been a reminder for me. And it's been coming up in my devotionals about having, uh, being faithful to the Lord because he is faithful and because we know that's where uh, we will be the most uh, blessed and the most satisfied. Yeah, you know, nothing profound. It's just been coming up recently. And, and it does apply, I think, to Colossians because we're going to start getting into even just in this next section, but especially towards the end of it, I mentioned Colossians gets into now the practical aspects of this is how we ought to live, knowing, acknowledging this is who Christ is, this is what he has done, this is the battle, these are the worldly, the fleshly things, and these are the, you know, these are the things we ought to put on now as the new creation, as the new man, as seeking to glorify God in everything that we do. Very simple. Very, uh, mundane in the sense that this just this should be always you know within us this desire and this prayer and this the call to action is always there the calling of the lord to serve in whatever capacities he wants us to is up to him and prayerfully and by the grace of god we submit ourselves to that yeah that's it and in the words of J. Vernon McGee, may God richly bless you, my beloved. 